today I am sharing how you can make your own distressed wood look papers. We're going to have a look at three different methods using different products. And plus at the end, I'm going to do a bit of an experiment with a media product that I think perhaps might work as well, but I haven't tried it out yet. So the idea is that we create some really distressed looking wood like pattern so there's this sort of look there's a crackle look let me just show you where i've used it on a couple of layouts so if you've been following my collection obsession series for october you would have seen this layout but i've used this um distressed wood paper as a background for a matting of the photo here on this one and then I've done the same here, only I've used two different types. So I made this beautiful white um, distress cracked looking wood paper. And then I've got some grey and brown distressed cracked wood paper in the back there. And right at the bottom here, I've used the blue. Now you can see how beautifully they've come up and how well they look on your layout. So those three ones in particular work fabulously for this seaside sort of look. Whereas this one, of course, is a lot more, you know, out in the bush, in Australian bush in this case, um, sort of feel to it because I've gone for the dark brown and the gray. So let's find out how we make them. So the first method and in fact, all the methods, you need a few things in particular. And some cardstock. Now it can just be any white cardstock. It can even be stuff that you've splattered on. You know, these are pieces where I've put them over photos to protect them when I've done splattering. Um, any scraps at all can be used. You can also use colored cardstock. So if we look at these ones, I worked on black. Um, it doesn't matter what you use because we're covering everything with paint, okay? Um, you'd notice when you do this technique that the cardstock becomes very flexible because remembering that our acrylic paints that we use often are polymers. They are plastic. So when we've got them in thin layers as a paint form, you've got this flexible flexibility happening okay so the first thing that you need to think about is the actual paint that you're using so you can basically use any type of water-based paint will work perfectly fine so i've got all these um cheapo well reasonably cheapo ones they're not really artist quality um paints that my grandson uses all the time so i'm just going to use some of this in fact i can show you like i use some of this red acrylic to do this one um i think i mix some of this blue with some white for this look so it doesn't have to be high quality acrylic paint you're using and this product which you probably have in your home somewhere some white glue so this particular one i've got is pva based white glue um once again this is a cheap crafty kitties version it's not an expensive one so first up we need our brush right when it comes to the brushes it doesn't really matter what you use but you do want something that is a flat brush rather than a round brush um this is these particular ones are called e-start artist starter brushes they come in a pack of in Australia, it costs us about $6.50 for a pack, and you can actually get five in the pack, I think it is. Um, these ones are also cheap discount ones that I've picked up. They are all nylon fiber brushes, not hog hair, but you could use hog hair. It would not matter. I just prefer something that's a bit smoother. I usually use these brushes for my watercolor painting. But um, I just like the softness and the smoothness of using these. So, one flat brush and your paint. I think I'm just going to use this one. And what should we go with? Might go with some chocolate brown. So here I've got um, brown earth. That sounds 
reasonable, isn't it? So we're going to put some of this. I'm putting it directly onto the cardstock here. Ugh. It is thick, this one, because it's so old. Oh, look, and now it's split, has it? Has it's cracked at the side. See, these are old ones, which is why I let my grandson use them. Okay, so we're going to smooth the paint out. And remember, this is technique number one. So I'm just going to have that much like that. And then I will smooth that over. And I'll smooth out paint to this. Now I'm going to go right to the edges. So you will see me making a mess on my mat here. We are going to put our glue. And once again, I'm just going to pour it straight on top if I can get it opened. <laughs> and we're pouring some glue on. Now, ooh, as everything else that I own, a lot of my glue and things are old. So you can see it's, there's a few lumps in there. So we're spreading the glue over. Hopefully yours is not as lumpy as mine is. It won't really matter though because, you know, we're after this distressed look. Now here's the tip with this. When you put the glue on, if you have the glue thin your cracks are going to be finer so you have to decide do you want it to be fine cracks or do you want it to be heavier if you want it heavier and bigger cracks more cracks have your glue thicker I'm just quickly drying this one off. Bring it up here. Can you see what's happening? Okay, so it's not fully dry. As it dries completely, you'll get more and more cracks happening. The next technique I'm showing you is using with uh, Tim Holtz Distress Micro Glaze. Great product. I use it quite a bit for different things when I want to create a water resist barrier between the media products I'm using. So this, um, if you don't have this, you may have Vaseline in your house somewhere and that will do the same thing. Okay, I don't have any Vaseline. I'm going with the glaze. Okay, so I've got um, some cardstock with just black acrylic. It's quite matte, this one, the Kaiser Craft, chalky almost. And then I've got this grey on this one. So I'm going to use my micro glaze and work around the edges. I'll put it all under my nails. same on the black and on the black I'm just going to do in particular areas but this is the same technique as was the last one that can be used on furniture on wood products on anything really just creating areas of resist where you want the black paint to come through And where you don't want to lose that black. Okay. Got lots on me here. All right. 
Now I've got this grey, so I'm going to use this grey out. I'm going to put some water with it. And we're going to go grey over the black. We're going for a messy look, so we're just putting it on lightly. You can see that it's resisting straight away. There we go. And on this one, we'll do the white. So I dried these off a bit and I'm going to put a third coat, a second coat, sorry, of Resist. I'm just going to use my white brush here, it won't matter, just make it a bit lighter with a bit of white. Uh, oh, it's a nice blue, sapphire blue and a bit of white, lovely. Not worried about that we're getting colours mixing because we want it to look distressed, old and rustic. Uh, it looks a bit uneven, does not matter at all. There we go. Alright, so I'm just going to leave that. And I think we'll use the same blue. I'll just put some water with that. It is quite thick. And we'll use this over the black and grey. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I like this look, it's looking good. So you can do any colours you like, whatever you're working on. I mean, you could really, if you wanted to, it might be nice to do. If you've got like a zoo or a jungle sort of look, you could go with some real khaki colours, some olive greens and some browns. Would look pretty cool. This is looking more nautical. Okay, let's try and do a bit of rubbing and see what comes off on what stays on. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, love it. Isn't that gorgeous? This one's really worked well just because of the colour palette, I think. It's, it's more successful. We've got the blue, the black and the grey. It's looking beautiful. Coming off really well. Definitely is getting that aged wood look effect. Now, when you're using your baby wipe, just find some clean bits to clean the area off so you get stronger colour coming through. Ah, lovely. So pretty. I'm going to leave it like that. It's a nice look. There we go. Look how beautiful that one is. All right, let's wipe this one away. So this one had the white, blue and gray. And yes, that's working beautifully. We're getting very distressed looking wood grain effect. The paint is coming off. Now remember this one I focused on around the edges. So not as much is coming off in the centre because I purposely put more of the 
micro glaze on and onto the edges. So I'm just going to leave it there. I think that's enough. I don't want to take off too much around the edges. But there you can see. Lovely distressed painted surface look happening. Okay, so we've used um, our PVA. We've used the micro glaze. And now I'm going to show you another uh, resist technique. So this time I've got this brown one here. Our earth brown. And I'm going to show you using a can candle wax. So this is actually, as you can see, a red old Christmas candle. And I don't really want the red to be left on there. So I've cleaned it off on the end so we can just use the white wax. So you're going to be creating distress again with the use of the wax. Anywhere we put the wax, our paint is not going to stick to. So think about that when you're applying the wax. Okay, so I've got my layer of wax on and I'm going to go and use this. Oops, don't forget my table is sloped. It's a drafting table, so things roll away. Okay, so let's use this grey that we've already got here. And so once again, this is not a crackle technique. This is a resist distress technique. So we're just putting our grey on top. And once again, you're seeing areas where already... It's resisting because we've got wax under this second layer. Oops. There we go. Just put a bit more there. Okay, I'm going to dry that and then I'm going to do more wax and a third layer. Okay, so putting more wax on here so I did go over oops oh uh, a bit tricky look it's taking off <laughs> taking off the uh, paint already oh look at that that's definitely worked I'm just going to try and get more wax on the surface here for a third color You can definitely see that that is working. Now we might, what's this blue light? We've got some cobalt blue here. I might actually add it, um, add it into our gray here just to make a different color. Okay, let's see what we get when we pull the paint off. So remember, we're rubbing it back. Uh, look at the layers there happening. You can see the brown at the base, our base coat. Okay, it's working well. So the wax works just as well as the micro glaze so if you've got some candles at home you are good to do this technique as well where you can distress and get a painted sort of finish to your paper that's nice isn't it it's different to the micro glaze effect in the fact that it comes off because we're almost drawing with our candle, drawing the lines, it comes off in a more um, linear effect. It's a finer sort of look to it, but just as effective. I like it. Okay, I'm just going to show you both of those together. So. 
This one is our candle wax. This one is the micro glaze. And you can see that if you want this finer sort of grained look of peeling paint, the candle wax works well for that. If you want a heavier resistance where you've got larger areas, micro glaze works perfectly for that. So there's our three methods. We've got PVA glue method. We've got the microglaze method. And our third method was using candle wax. Now, I was going to have a go using some gel medium to see if we could get a similar effect. Because remember when I've used gel medium in the past, it has... Um, it's um, translucent, so it's clear. It dries very much like your PVA glue does. So I suspect we should get the same sort of effect. So what I've got here is a piece of cardstock. Ooh, it's very dirty on my side. Um, it's got light blue on here, paint, and then I've gone with white over the top and I dried it and you can see that I got the heat gun a bit too. <laughs> bit too close so it got a bit bubbly in this section but that's okay because we're going for a distress look so i thought what i'd do is try and put on a layer of this gel over the top and see if we can get the same sort of effect as using our pva to get a crackle effect now one thing i'm going to do this time though is i'm going to go up and down in some sections and across in others because what should happen and what does happen when you use PVA, if you do this sort of technique, is that it cracks in all different directions, not just in a linear fashion. So it looks like wood. You get different cracking occurring. That'll do us. All right, I'm going to water down our paint here. Once again, using what we've got. So we're just going to go with the blue here. Now, remember when you put with the glue technique, you need to lightly apply the paint over the top. You don't want it to be, you don't want to press down too hard. You don't want it mixing with what's underneath it. And in this case, underneath it, we've got our gel medium. Now, this may not work at all. But we will see, won't we? I just thought that perhaps given the consistency is very similar to a PVA, that it may work. So we have got some cracking occurring. It's a lot finer than with the glue. With the painted surface where we had two layers of acrylic paint on there, we had a light blue at the base, we had white on top, and then we put the layer of our um, gel medium over the top, and then we put our layer of acrylic paint. So it has crackled, but it's much, much finer and not as cracked as when we use the PVA. So remember when I said with PVA, if you do a really light layer, you get very fine cracking. Where it's heavier, you get bigger cracks. With the gel medium, most of it is quite light. Now, what I would tend to do is I would also go to town on this with some sandpaper. Let me find a piece. 
and you could sand some areas back. Grunge it up even more. So you could just, anywhere that, that you've got some, a bit of texture, you could take a bit more paint off by sanding. But it definitely is giving you a distressed look. Oops. using the gel medium so that works as well so we found out another use for our gel medium is that we can use it to distress and create fine cracking and get some weathered wood look happening on the six by four sheet there was areas where i had the glue thicker and thinner so on the thinner areas you're getting the fine cracks on the thicker areas you're getting wider cracks then when i was messing around on this 12 by 12 i put the paint really thick as in the acrylic paint on top it's much thicker than this paint that i've used here and we didn't get as many cracks happening probably because the the paint was too thick but i had also the glue was quite thick and so you have got some wide cracking happening there so there is the PVA glue. Then just to play around and check it out, and I haven't shown you this on camera, but this is just ordinary straight white cardstock with a thin layer of PVA. And then the thin um, Kaiser acrylic black paint over the top. So the cracking that occurred with this is really quite fine. And I think because I kept the glue fine and the paint was a thin paint, um, we got a finer textured effect. I quite like it. Then what I did is I used the baby wipe and rubbed around the edges and took some of the paint off. So yeah, these ones here are all the PVAs. Okay, then the next thing, working with, our Tim Holtz micro glaze. On this one, I heavily put around the edges the uh, micro glaze. So you've got a lot of peeled paint come off here. We've used three colors. We used our gray base and white and blue. And this one, we use the black base, um, gray and blue. And they've both worked really well. And then our third technique that we did was with the candle wax. So I really like this one where we used a candle and we just basically drew lines of wax over our base coat and then layered the paint. Second layer, let it dry, draw some more wax on. Third layer and dry it and then rub it back with the baby wipe and the effect has turned out really well and then our experimentation was using the um, gel medium and even though we didn't get huge cracks we did get fine line cracks through here which I quite like and then I've taken to it with some sandpaper to rough up some areas because we had some bubbling happening from our heat gun. So an interesting look. So we've got all these, which are rather gorgeous, that we can use now on some of our layouts. I hope that was interesting to some of you. Um, if you haven't checked out my other Make Your Own videos, please have a look at them. There's quite a few where I'm using the gel medium product in different but um, different techniques. Um, and thanks for listening. I'll see you soon.